people think about exponential environments, they always think about how the curve goes up like that, which it does, right? But the, 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 the inverse of that is that the cost of any one capability plummets. This is a function of exponential thinking. Guys, as human beings, we are hardwired to think in linear terms. If we're at 1%, we're almost done. If we're at 1%, we're halfway there. That's what happens in an exponential environment. We are living in an exponential environment. Point is, how do we expand the conversations you're having with your clients? And it's my job to look at these trends. It's what I do every day. I look at the case histories, use cases, success stories. Where is the venture capital money going? Where's the private equity money going? Right? Where's the positive ROI? That's what I do every, I love what I do. Guys, I'm a nerd, I'm a geek. So geek out with me. They need to be excited. There's no such thing as a confused buyer. If they're confused, they don't buy. Look at the cutting edge, to look at the bleeding edge, right? What's happening at the forefront? And learn from those use, because the cost structure comes down, right? The first people pay the most. Self-driving cars, we're gonna talk about it. It's coming way faster than people realize. Right? As leaders, as individuals, you're leading your team, you're heading your client discussions, you're planning what discussions need to take place in the future, we have to think exponentially, right? Proof of concept, proof of concept. Where are people testing the technology? And what are the implications of those tests? There are 3.5 million truck drivers in this country. What happens? People are creative and people want to work. Guys, there's gonna be winners and losers. Let's just make sure we're winners. I mean, let's make sure we're on the right side of that leverage equation. This is really fascinating. So there's all these frameworks and predictive models that you can use to look at the trends and project into the future. That's what I do. I'm super passionate about this. You can, there are tools you can use to, to understand what's coming. Innovation is a function of capabilities. There's different types of innovation, right? There's incremental innovation and disruptive innovation. Incremental innovation comes from the center of the field of expertise. Disruptive innovation comes from the side. Disruptive innovation invalidates existing business models. Where does the disruptive innovation come from? It comes from the overlap. It comes from adjacent markets. It comes from the fringe. It always comes from the fringe. What's the leading edge of nutritional supplements? in horse racing. Horse racing is where they test the supplements. That's where they tested creatine. That's where they tested the impact of D3. That's where they test all those things that are on the fringe because it's not regulated. And the desperate people who have a horse that's not quite good enough to win will test anything to see if it might work. And they beta tested the fringe. What are the adjacent markets? People always get in a defensive posture. They're worried, who's gonna eat my lunch? That's the wrong approach. You gotta be offensive and say, who else's lunch can I eat? Disruptive innovation, right? It almost always comes from the least profitable market segment, right? It almost always comes from the least profitable business segment, right? So what are the pain in the neck clients? What are the ones that are, oh, there's such a pain, the worst clients. What do those clients want? Any presentation that you see about innovation, doesn't matter who it is, right, where it is, it doesn't matter. Inevitably, if it's done right, it always boils down to really one concept, uh, which you can summarize in just two words. And those two words are budgeting failure. You have to be willing to budget for failure. You have to try new things that you don't know will work. Right, it's Jeff Bezos, Amazon, that guy is genius. I, mean, I told you I love quotes. He's famous for saying, if you know it's gonna work, it's not an experiment. You gotta try something new, which implies it might not work. Innovation requires failure. It requires trying new things. Now's the time, right? Maybe today isn't the right time. Maybe their gross margin is so tight, you can't afford that risk. That's cool, but when do you need to pull the trigger? You can use these to get a really clear idea of where things are going. My message for you this morning is just to think bigger, to think way bigger about what's possible. All your people in your team, they get inspired by when you think bigger. Your customers get inspired. Your competitors get inspired when you're thinking bigger. It inspires everybody. If you think bigger, when you think way bigger, quite often you end up having almost no competition along the way because no one else has the courage to go after those goals. The cost of sending a rocket to the ISS, International Space Station, the cost of doing that is about 60 million bucks. Ballpark, depends on the cargo, okay. It's about 60 million. How much does the fuel cost? The answer is $200,000. One three hundredth of the total cost.
one three hundredth of the total cost, which means if you can reuse the hardware, you can bring down the cost function by a hundredfold or more. The average age of these folks are 27 years old on average. That makes them millennials. Let me tell you something. It's true what we heard earlier. They get a bad rap. People say they're lazy, apathetic, and entitled. It's not true. Those millennials will work harder than anyone you've ever seen if you give them something inspiring to work towards. You want to get those people engaged? Do something bigger. They all want to change the world. They want to be part of something bigger. My presentation isn't a presentation about technology trends or disruptive innovation. It's about leadership. You can do so much more. There's so many opportunities to make sure that your clients are on the right side of that leverage equation. But I'm thrilled to be here and thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you.